worked with First Finance Company, which is a fund management company. We are licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission and we offer wealth management services and then we also manage funds. So for this afternoon, we are going to be having discussions on how to find the balance between life and our finances. And um, we promise that this section is going to be a very interesting one. So I will first and foremost take you through the presentation and then we will address all your questions at the end of the presentation. So let's get started. Um, so how do we find um, a balance between our life and our finances? We all know that once you are born, definitely you will grow. And once the Lord blesses you, you will live long. And as you move along, it is key that you plan your things, including your finances, because the finances will help you to be able to take some critical decisions in your life. So um, we are living in a very difficult time. So far as our financial um, issues are concerned, we have had a number of issues. We've had COVID that affected people's finances. We, before that, we've had issues in the financial sector. So we think that this is the right time for us to discuss some of those issues. So we are living in very difficult times and life is a struggle for a lot of us. However, the situation may be, one thing we always say is that we are better off addressing the situation than allowing the situation to take control of us. So whatever um, situation you find yourself in, so far as your finances are concerned, you are better off bringing it out to have discussions on it and finding solution about on it instead of allowing the situation to take control of you. So let's look at how life works. Um, so let's say that approximately we live for 28,000 days. And um, we are saying approximately because we will have people who live below this number of days, and then we also have people who will go above this number of days. Um, so approximately we live for 28,000 days. And this translates into 76.71 years. So let's just assume that we live on this earth for 80 years, all things being equal. But as I said, we will have people falling off as we move along. You have people also going above this number of years as we move along. So let's see what happens. All things being equal, we assume that we live on this earth for 80 years. Let's see what happens. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, Sule. So let's say we live on this earth for 80 years. We are going to divide this 80 years into four equal parts. And this is going to be four equal 20 years. So let's see what happens at each stage of our life. So the first stage we are looking at from the time you, are, you were born till you are 20, that will be your first 20 years on earth. Then from age 20 to 40, and then from 40 to 60, and finally from 60 to 80. But interestingly, let's see what happens in, at each stage. So the first stage we are looking at from the time you were born to the age of 20 years. What happens during that stage? Um, that is where we're all kids. We go to school, we study, we play, we have fun. And we are really not interested in what happens so far as our finances are concerned because people are taking care of us and we don't earn any income at that stage. Then we move on to the next stage, which is from 20 to 40. And this is the age that most of us are completing school. We are getting our first job, people are buying their first cars, people are getting into marriages, having kids, buying their first houses. Then we move on from there, the third phase of our life, which is from 40 to 60. And it is at this stage that most people will be thinking of having their second jobs, second car, probably you want a second house for investments. At this stage, your kids are in school. Then we enter into our final stage, which is from age 60 to 80. And what happens at that stage, that is where we retire. 
even if you're doing your own business, a time will come where you may not be that active in running it. So from age 60 to 80, that is where most of us relax, we retire, and then we are not very active in, um, in, um, in business. But the key point I want to highlight here is that the most important time of all this is the first stage and the last stage. So from age zero to 20, and from age 60 to 80 are the critical parts of our lives. Why do I say that? Because this is the stage that we don't earn any income. So if you are from zero to 20, they are taking care of you. And from 60 to 80, what happens is that you are not earning income. So technically, all the money that you need to spend between your 60 to 80 would be money that you have accumulated between your 20 to 60 years. So technically you have 40 years to be able to put your life on track, all things being equal. And for some people, it may even be shorter than 40 because then people tend to complete school even um, after 20 years. So the maximum number of years we have to be able to put our finances on track, technically is 40 years or less. Okay, so then the question is that for each stage of our life, there are four critical questions that we need to ask ourselves. I started by saying that approximately we live for 80 years, but it's not everybody who will be able to make it. And then also, secondly, we will have people who will go beyond that number of years. So the four critical questions that I would want us to pay attention to at this stage is, what if I'm not able to work till the age of 60? What are some of the things that will make us not to be able to work up to 60? We can put it in the chat column and then we can discuss it. So the first question is, what if I'm not able to work up to the age of 60? Then the second question is that, what if I don't make it to the age of 60 at all? I die along the line. Then the third thing is how much is enough to retire when I reach 60? And finally, how can I ensure that my kids start life on the right foundation? So let's look at the answers to these questions. So what if I'm not able to make it, or what if I'm not able to work till age 60? So if you're not able to work till age 60, what it means is that probably you could have an injury that will not allow you to work till 60, or probably you could have a terminal illness that will not allow you to work till 60. What it means is that you wouldn't have been able to invest for a very long time to accumulate so much money to be able to take care of yourself. So what we are saying is that everybody needs an income protection product. So it could be an insurance, it could be an investment product that can protect your income. So the key thing here is to have an income protection product so that in the event that you are unable to work till 60, you can fall on that to be able to take care of yourself. And it's insurance mostly that provides these solutions. I wouldn't want to go, today's webinar is not to go into specific insurance products that we will have to look at. We can talk about that after this because I'll leave my details. Then the second question, what if I don't make it to age 60? Somebody will say, well, if I don't make it to age 60, I don't really care about it because I wouldn't be here. But we all know that we have dependents. So how do you ensure that there's continuity of life for your dependents when you are not here? And the answer to that is life insurance. Everybody needs to have a good life insurance so that when you are no more, there will be continuity of life for your dependents. Then the third question, how much is enough to retire? So all things being equal, you get to 60 and you go on retirement. Life insurance will not be paid to you when you are alive. So what happens to you? So if you live till age 60, you need to have a retirement fund. And when we talk of retirement fund here, we are not looking at somebody hitting age 55 and then beginning to start preparing for their retirement. Anytime I'm asked about the right time to start preparing for your retirement, I always tell 
people that it is the time you take your first paycheck. So once you take your first paycheck, you need to put a retirement fund in place and start investing towards that. So that by the time you are 60, you have an augmented retirement account that you add to whatever your employers have put together, or whatever government has put together, and then you live a very comfortable life. Then finally, how can I ensure my kids start life on the right foundation? The solution to that is an educational fund. Every child needs to have an educational fund so that you are not under pressure when your kids are ready to go to school. And I lay a lot of emphasis on tertiary education because most of the time when we, the parents, are getting ready to go on retirement, that is when kids are ready to go to college. So it is very important that we plan adequately for them by putting this in place. And I believe that once we are able to go through this process and put this in place at each stage of our life, we should be okay whether we are sick, whether we are no longer here, or whether we live and we retire, we will still have a comfortable life and we will also ensure that we leave the right foundation for our children. Okay, so that takes me to a very important thing I would like to talk about and that is financial planning. Because all the things that I spoke about earlier will have for you to be able to succeed in it, you need to be able to plan your finances. So basically when it comes to financial planning, we are talking about a document that contains your current financial situation and then what you plan to do or what goals you have so far as your finances are concerned. And then we sit with you and help you put strategies in place to be able to achieve these goals. In either case, you need to be able to evaluate your current financial state and then your future expectation before you'll be able to start. So we are going to look at the specific steps that we need to go through when we are doing financial planning. So the first thing to do when we are looking at financial planning, so later you can please go to the next slide. So the, next, the first thing to do when we are looking at that is to establish our goals. You need to know your objectives. You, know, you need to know what you want to do. So if your objective is to retire comfortably, then you said that if your objective is to buy a car in five or seven years time, you set that in place. Or probably your objective is to build um, your dream house in the next 10 years, then you set that in place. So you need to establish your financial goals. Then you are setting your assets and your liabilities. For this purpose, when I talk of assets and liabilities, I'm looking at your possession and then um, your obligations. So you list all the things that you have, and then you also look at the things that take money out of your pocket, or in other words, your obligations. So you need to list all that, and then you subtract your liabilities from your assets in order to arrive at your financial position. And this exercise is very important because there are so many people who have lots of stuff, but when they go through this exercise, they realize that they actually don't have anything because all the things they have were financed by probably debt. So then you may not really have anything. So you, it is important that you establish your financial position or your network. Once this is done, you need to find out whether it is positive or it is negative, but it doesn't really matter. The key thing is to develop a plan. Even if it's a negative, the key thing is to develop a plan around it that will help you get out of the situation. In developing this plan, it is important to mention that you don't do it yourself. You need to get a professional. You need to talk to a wealth manager. You need to talk to a financial planner. And all investment houses in Ghana offer these services. And the good thing is that they offer the services at no fee. In other parts of the world, people pay so much to have these things put together for them. But in Ghana, I mean, almost all the invest I don't know of any investment house that will offer financial planning and charge you at this moment. So let's take advantage of this, talk to them and let them put things together for us. Let's not try to do things on our own because we may not be experts in that field. The same way you are not advised to take, to go for over-the-counter medication, but rather to contact a doctor when you are not well, the same way if you want to look at your finances, it is important to talk to the right people. So, so once you put together a plan, then you implement the plan and then you monitor and evaluate as we, you move along. 
and it is also important to mention that you can make changes to the plan as you move along or as your situation changes you can always um, change or make modification to the plan and then evaluate but it is important that you talk to a professional to do that for you and there are so many investment houses when you, you visit the securities and exchange commission website it gives you a list of all the companies that are in good standing that you can work with okay so why are we talking about all these issues it is because we have identified three key problems that we think uh, affects majority of people especially majority of Ghanaians. number one People are living from one paycheck to another paycheck. I'm sure the, the attendees will agree. If you agree, just give me a thumbs up on the chat column. If you agree with me that so many people are living from one paycheck to the other paycheck. Secondly, we have also realized that a lot of people struggle to give um, quality education to their awards. We spoke about that earlier. And then we also realized that a lot of people retire poor. So people work so hard, yet they retire very poor. I can't see your thumbs up. Does that mean you don't agree with me? So these are the three key problems that we have identified. That's one, people are living from one paycheck to another paycheck. Secondly, we have also realized that people struggle to give their awards quality education. And also finally, we also realize that a lot of people retire poor. So how can we turn the situation around? The first thing to do is emergency funds. We are saying that everybody needs to have an emergency fund. And when I talk of emergency funds, I'm talking about a fund that you put in place that will contain a minimum of six months to one year of your net income. So if you are earning a thousand Ghana CD, we advise that you have a minimum of between 6,000 to 12,000 in an emergency fund. And this emergency fund, you invest it in a short-term financial instrument because you can need it at any time or you invest it in an instrument that is liquid so that anytime you want to have access to it, it will be very easy for you to have access to it. And emergency funds are so dear to my heart because of current happenings. So let me give you typical examples that we have seen in our country recently. So we all woke up one day and had um, issues in our financial sector and people lost their jobs. People were not prepared for this. I'm sure we had a lot of issues about this in, in the media, about people not being able to take care of um, themselves. I even heard about people going to even sell um, things by the roadside. People had to use their cars for Ubers and all that because they are not earning the kind of salaries they were earning before the issue happened. So the thing is, I, I, I just want to ask you a question. Assuming you have about six months to one year of your net income in an investment, what it means is that your life would have gone on because you would have still been able to draw on your salary as if you were still working for the next six months or the next one year. And we believe that within the six months or the next one year, you'll be able to put your life back on track. I'm sure you all agree with me. Secondly, we all woke up one day and we heard of a virus far away in Wuhan, China. It sounded so far. I was even wondering, I mean, how many miles are we? It's so far, it, it, it might not even get here. Little did we know that this thing that we heard was going to go around the world, affects everywhere across the world, and then um, bring nations to a standstill. Industries had to come to a standstill. Industries like the aviation sector, um, hospitality sector had to come to a standstill. And this is true no fault of um, the workers there. It's not as if you have done anything. So you could be working and say that you'll be of good behavior. You wouldn't involve yourself in anything. But things like COVID could happen to your, and it could hit your industry and you find yourself out of a job. So if such a thing happens, what do you do? You will have to go home. And if you don't have an emergency fund, then it means that you have to struggle Start calling on family and friends to assist you and we all know 
when that happens, I mean, they will equally be going through their problems. So emergency fund, ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very important that we all have it in place. Then secondly, I spoke about college educational fund. It is important that we put that in place for our children so that when our children are in college and we go on retirement, we are not forced to use our retirement packages to take care of them because we are not taking care of children to come back and take care of us. I always say that that should be, never be the expectation of any parent. If your kids come back and take care of you, that is good, but your expectation is not to take care of your children. So it is important and it is your responsibility as a parent or as a guardian to take care of your children. Then finally, it is important that you prepare for your own retirement. Your children are not your retirement account. So don't take care of them and sit and say that when you go on retirement, you expect that they'll come back and take care of you. You might be disappointed. So it's important. And one key thing that is very important to me when we go on retirement, it's not even about the money, but it's about healthcare. Because most people working now have their companies taking care of their health. But once you go on retirement, that will not happen any longer. You will have to pay out of pocket. We all know about our national health insurance system. I don't want to go into it. So we, it is not something we want to rely on. It is very important that you have money to be able to pay for your own private um, health insurance and plan adequately to, for your own basic necessities that you need when you go on retirement. So ladies and gentlemen, we urge you that it is important that you start very early in order to be able to um, have the full benefit when you go on retirement. So how do we get started? What are the actions that we need to put in place? The first thing I want to say is that it is important that we learn to pay ourselves first. What do I mean by paying yourself first? When you get your paycheck, you need to be able to take something out for yourself before you do any other thing, before you pay your other bills. So we are saying that if you are on a very tight budget, because we know that we are in Africa, we are we have an extended family system, you probably need to give an auntie or an, an uncle, there's some funeral somewhere that you need to take care of. So we are saying that if you think that your budget is really, really tight, then you need to put aside at least 10%. There's a, there was a webinar earlier on, so if you go to dobia.com, there, there was a webinar on how to create a budget. So I'll entreat all of you to go and look at that so that we will be able to go through how to um, create a budget. So if you're on a tight budget, we are saying that you put aside at least 10% of your income. If you're on a moderate budget, you put at least 20% of your income away. And if you are on a very flexible budget, you can put as much as 30, 40 or 50% away. But it is very, very important that when you take your salary or you take your paycheck, you put something aside for yourself before you do other things. Then secondly, we are saying that don't procrastinate. Do it now because the costs of waiting for five years, the cost of waiting for two years, the cost of waiting for 10 years could be very, very expensive for you. You may not have the opportunity to recover. So we are urging that once you, you, you hear about this, you take that decision now and you start. Talk to a financial planner, talk to an asset manager today and start. Then we are saying that be consistent and let your money work for you. It doesn't really matter the amount that you invest. It is about how you do it. So the consistency is key. It is very important that once you start, you are consistent and you stay on track and you allow your money to work for you. Then number four, if there are bankers on this platform, I'm sure they are going to hold my neck for this because anytime I do this presentation and there are bankers on it, I'm very careful because they tell you that you are spoiling their markets. But we are telling you that try as much as possible to eliminate debt for personal consumption. So that, that is why we clearly qualify it. We are talking about debt for personal consumption. We are not talking about you taking a facility to go and run a business that will earn you returns that are above the cost that you are paying. In this case, we are talking about debt for personal consumption. You see a dress that you like, you go and take a loan to buy it. You see a shoe, you go and take a loan to buy it. That is what we are talking about. We are also talking about taking loans to go and pay your children's school fees. It's, it's not an emergency. 
That is why we are saying that you should plan adequately for the kids' education so that once it's time to pay, you just take it out of it. But it is key that you eliminate debts for personal consumption. Debt will give you convenience to do things you like to do, but in the long run, they will ruin your finances because you continue to pay out and you will never have money to put aside. So it's like you do it, you pay. Sometimes people don't, even, these days you hear the bank, they don't even allow you to finish paying. Then they tell you that will come and refinance your loan and then you go. So if you're not careful, you continue to do that. So you go on retirement. And finally, we are saying that protect your investment with a life insurance. It is very, very important that you protect your life, your investment with a life insurance. Most people think life insurance is for the rich, but it is rather the opposite because if I'm rich and I have so much money that I can even live for my dependents, then I don't need life insurance. Life insurance actually is for people who actually don't have a lot of money accumulated. So what it means is that, if you are investing, your plan is to invest up to 1 million or 2 million in the next 30 years. But as you move along and you don't reach there and you are no longer alive, what happens to your dependents? So it is very important that you protect your investment with the life insurance. Invest, but look for a very good life insurance that can give you very good sum assure. I don't really believe in life insurance that has investments embedded in it. They are separate things. So invest your money and get a risk product, which is a life insurance, which is a risk product, a pure risk product that will take care of that need for you. Okay, Sule, if we can. Okay, so now with all these things, I'm sure people are thinking, what are some of the instruments that we can invest in? What are some of the things that we can do once we take a decision that we want to talk to an asset manager, we want to talk to a financial planner. There are so many instruments um, available. So I'm just going to run through it. This section is not to come and give a, 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 an education on the details of each. That is why we are saying that talk to an asset manager who will tell you the details, but there are so many of them. We have treasury bonds, there are treasury bills that you can talk to your financial planner to assist you. They are corporate bonds. They are fixed deposits. I'm sure most of us are, are familiar with fixed deposits. They are commercial papers. You can buy shares or what we call equities, or there are other alternative investments that you, you can even do. So all we are saying is that we have several instruments available. Talk to your financial planner, talk to any investment house on this, and then we will assist you with it. But then there's one key, so to the next slide, there's one key um, investment instrument I want to spend a bit more time on and just talk about, and that is mutual funds. Because I believe that mutual funds actually gives you the opportunity to create wealth um, over time. And I will tell you why I think mutual funds are one of the key ways that you can create wealth. So let's start, what are mutual funds? Um, so they are pool funds. So what happens is that you, the funds are pulled from like-minded minded investors, and this fund is given to a fund manager, a professional fund manager, a regulated, uh, a fund manager regulated by the SEC, and the fund manager invests this funds in various securities. There are various types of mutual funds. So the fund manager invests this money in securities, and then. Once these investments are done, there are retains on it, and these retains are passed on to the investors. All the fund manager ends are the fund management fees. So when we talk of mutual fund, we are just talking about money moving from investors, giving to fund managers, the fund managers invested in securities, and then the retains are passed on. There are so many um, mutual fund or collective investment schemes so we can have mutual fund or unit trusts. Um, so there are several of them. Almost all the fund management companies are offering um, collective investment schemes. So please visit the SEC website. You will see the number of uh, mutual fund or collective investment schemes that we have and the various companies that are offering um, those products. And then you, you talk to them to assist you to start investing. So let's see why we think mutual funds are a good platform 
that we can use to create wealth. The first thing is because of diversification. I'm sure we are all used to this um, phrase that don't put all your eggs in one basket. Although other people will tell you to put all your eggs in one basket and watch the baskets very well. But I believe strongly that we don't put all our eggs in one basket. So there's something we call diversification. So because mutual funds are coming from different, different investors and these funds are pulled together, the fund manager is able to diversify and invest in several securities. What this means is that if one side is not doing well, the other side will do well to cover up. So you spread your wings so that you are not hit by risk. Then secondly, they are professionally managed. So those funds are given to fund managers who do thorough research before they put together whatever investment uh, plan that they have for the fund. So they don't just get up and invest based on sentiment or emotions or how they feel about one particular fund, whether they like it or they don't like it. But those investments are backed by solid research. So they are professionally managed. They are highly regulated. So all mutual funds are licensed by the SEC. Then the fund managers are also licensed. Reports or are sent on monthly basis, quarterly basis, annual basis to the SEC. From time to time, the SEC comes for inspection. You are required to have your own in-house audit and compliance person that monitors and ensures that the right things are done. Then there's also security and transparency. The, in, the, the beautiful thing about, about collective investment scheme is that there are various parties. So the money does not sit with the fund manager. The money sits with the custodian bank. And that custodian is equally regulated by the Bank of Ghana and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Then the fund manager takes the investment um, decision. So there's so much transparency. You can walk into the fund manager's office at any time and inspect their books. It is allowed. Then they are also very affordable. You can get mutual fund as low as five Ghana CD. There are some for 20 CDs, there are some for 10 CDs and so on and so forth. So you can, um, it's very affordable. You can add up to your money at any time. You can add up to your money on daily basis. You can do it on weekly basis, fortnightly. You can do it monthly, quarterly. You can put a lump sum. It's so flexible and it's very affordable. So I'll urge each and every one of you, if you don't have a mutual fund account after this presentation, walk into any fund manager's office and talk to them and start a mutual fund account today. Okay, so when taking an investment decision or when you want to go and take an investment decision, I'm sure most people will say that, okay, we are saying that these companies are all regulated, these companies are all this and that, but we were all here when we saw companies collapsing. Even some of these companies were equally regulated. So what are some of the things that we need to to take into consideration when we want to take an investment decision. It is very important that you ensure that you have clearly defined objectives. Without having a clearly defined objectives, you can't even move on. You need to know why you're investing, how long you want to put your money away. It is very, very important. And secondly, you need to ensure that your objective matches the security that you are investing in. In some instances, it is not about a fund manager mismanaging somebody's fund, but it is purely what we call assets and liability mismatch. So what happens is that you are looking at investing in a short term, but you see a long term instrument with a very good rate, and then you jump at it. The time that you are ready to take your money, the money will not be available because it wouldn't have matured. So it is very important that we talk to a financial planner to help us to ensure that the objectives that we have matches with the kind of fund or the kind of security that we are choosing or to invest in. Then it is important that you do it with the right institution. How do you ensure that the institution is right? Well, there are some key few things that I would like to highlight here. Number one, first and foremost, ensure that the institution is licensed. And it's very easy to do that because when the issues happen in the financial sector, we heard a lot of people talk about the fact that we didn't know this institution was not licensed. But it is the easiest thing that we could find out. You just go to the SEC website, you check all the companies that are in good standing. 
they update it from time to time. They update that from time to time. So it is very important that we do that. And then we also have to ensure that the products that we are investing it in is equally um, licensed. So if you are investing with an institution that is licensed, ensure that the product that we are investing it in is equally licensed. We had people investing with the right institutions, but then they invested in the wrong product. So the two will have to go together. The institution has to be licensed. The product has to be an approved product. Then you look at the track record of the company, the people behind the company, lift the veil and see the people behind the business. Then it is very important that you understand the investment model that is being used. You know that you are investing in a fixed income mutual fund. The person tells you that I will give you 60% in one week, 60% in two weeks. You need to know that it is not possible. You you are invested in probably a, 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 a security backed something. So there's an underlying thing, probably the underlying thing is oil or is gold and all that. You know that is a form of derivative. The thing is supposed to be sort of traded. The person tells you, I'll give you a guaranteed return. You need to ask questions. That is why it is important not to do it on your own. Then you look at issues of corporate governance. You look at the lifestyle. Today, they are using the money to buy a private jet here and there. They are doing all that. It is important that you look at some of those things. Ask the questions. Talk to a trusted, independent person. I'm sure we all have friends, schoolmates that are in this sector. Talk to them to ensure that you understand um, what you are doing. And one key thing that I would like to talk about is that if you don't understand anything, don't put your money into it. If you don't understand, don't put your money into it. It is very important that we look at that before you invest in anything that we want to invest in. I think we have 45 minutes, right? So we are a bit behind time. We should be concluding soon so that we can take your question. So Suli, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so it is very important that every individual, once you are, you've taken a decision that you want to turn around your finances, it is important that you look at some key things and I'm going to start from the last one up. So key things that you need to do or key takeaways from this presentation today. If, if you haven't really, really um, taken any of the things that we discussed today into consideration, if you forget anything, please don't forget the six things. Number one, we're saying that if you're a Christian, you pay your tithe if, or you give out because I mean, we all need to give back to society, but it is important you pay yourself. So you need to pay yourself. Everybody needs to have an emergency fund you need to eliminate debt from your life, especially debt for personal consumption. If you're a parent or a guardian, it is important that you set an educational fund for your children. It's also important that you set a retirement fund for yourself because I'm reiterating that your children are not your retirement account. Then finally, after doing all the five things, you can look at your other goals and dreams that you have. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We are slightly behind time, but then we'll take your questions now and then we get into the discussion section. Thank you so much. All right, uh, thank you very much, Gloria. I think this was a very insightful uh, presentation. Uh, I've learned a lot personally, and I believe the participants have also picked some nuggets as well. Um, so uh, we are now in the Q&A session. Um, if you want to speak, uh, raise up your hand and then we can give you the floor to ask any question uh, you may have. But uh, we have a question in the Q&A box from Elvis. Uh, and which is, please, what type of fund will you advise we keep our emergency funds in? Okay. Thank you, Elvis. So when we talk of emergency funds, um, we already said that these are funds that we could need at any time. So key things to look out for, the fund has to be liquid so that if you need your money, you can easily have access to it. So you can either do treasury bills, you can do a money market fund, or you can do a fixed income fund. 
But the key thing is to ensure that whatever fund you are looking at is a liquid fund that you can easily have access to anytime you need it. So either treasury bills, a money market fund, or a fixed income fund is what I would advise. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so if you have any further questions, um, either type it in the Q&A or chat box, or you can raise your hand and uh, speak, uh, interact with uh, our presenter. Hello. Yeah. Do, do. And anybody wants to make a comment or ask a question? Oh, okay. Um, we we have another one here, and uh, is that please talk about home financing? Okay. Okay, Elvis. Again, thank you so much, Elvis. Um, so when it comes to home financing, um, it is one key thing that a lot of people are facing because um, statistics shows that about seventy percent of people living in, in Accra are actually um, renting. So when it comes to home financing, it is very important that you do it early. And you, we need to understand that there's a difference between having your first home and having your dream home. So it is very important that you get at least a small place that you can start life rather than waiting and saying that when you go on retirement, you will have access to a lump sum to build your dream house. And these days, there are a lot of mortgage facilities that we have um, available. So if you don't have all the money to do, we advise that you look for a very affordable mortgage facility that a number of banks are, are offering. Then you assess it to build your home so that by the time you are going on retirement, you will be able to have access to it. And the interesting part is that the law, the pension law actually allows you to use your tier two as security for your primary residence. So explore that from your, your fund managers or your pension fund um, administrators. They will assist you to do that. So home financing is key. It is very important that we do it. We, and it is also important to say that it is not all the time that you need a very big house. If you don't ha have a big family, you don't need a big house. Some people build very huge edifice and then they hardly even use part of it. So it is very important. You have a small family, you put up something very small and then you live in it. Most people wait and then when they go on retirement, that is when they build a lot of um, huge um, houses. But the key thing to know or the key thing to talk about is the fact that it is rather when you are going on retirement that you need a small place. This is because your kids will not be there. Let's ask ourselves, how many of us go back to our parents all the time to go and live with them? You will just be there with your wife, just the two of you and probably somebody to help you at home. So you may not need that huge house. So please take advantage of the mortgage facilities. Talk to your pension fund administrator on how to use your tier two, if you, you are working, how to use your tier two as a, a, as a security to back your primary residence because the law has made provision for that. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, you can ask your question. Hi, yes, please, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is that is it entirely possible to eliminate debts as per point four? And two, in regards to home financing, how advisable do you think it is to invest in real estate, especially for low income earners who are now starting out with life? Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. So, to take your first question on whether it is possible to eliminate debt, Okay, so that is why we have qualified it. 
in our earlier um, slide, we said death for personal consumption. So anytime, there's one key question that you need to ask yourself anytime you are going for a debt. Ask yourself whether whatever you are going to use that debt for will, be, will give you more returns than the cost that you are paying for it. So you can't go for a debt at, let's say, 26% and go and use it for a business that will give you a return of 11%. That is a total um, loss there. So we are not saying that debt is bad, but debt for personal consumption, for basic things, is what we are talking about. And secondly, anytime you are taking debt, ensure that it is giving you a return that is above the cost that you are paying for, for it. Then on your second question, which is on um, home, whether you can invest in real estate. Yes, real estate are also asset classes that you can invest in. Um, there are people who invest in um, rentals, so you, you can invest in a property that you rent. There are people who build and sell property. And then there are even investment trust funds. We have one in Ghana REITs that you can invest in. So it's a fund put together that invests in real estate and you can indirectly also benefit by investing in it. But if you are going directly into real estate, we all know the issues that we have with our land acquisition in the country. You need to ensure that you do your homework and do the right and due diligence so that you don't burn your fingers. But yes, real estate are also asset classes that you can consider investing in. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, uh, Gloria. Um, I think uh, we answered all the questions. Um, we don't have a raise hand again. Um, so I would like to say thank you very much for helping us understand uh, this how we can uh, take these important financial and life decisions. And uh, to the participants, I hope you've learned something that can help you in making uh, decisions in your life and uh, with regard to your finances as well. And uh, we hope to see you in our next webinar uh, as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, Gloria, um, will you want to share your details so that if any of them wants to get in touch with you? Yes. So I'll just type my email address in the chat column. Um, you can get in touch with me after this for further discussion on it. I also run a, a I have a YouTube channel that you can that we have short videos on investment it's called Gloria Empowers so you go to google you just type Gloria Empowers it takes you to the YouTube channel and then we also have a blog on investment it's www.gloriaempowers.com you can also get in touch with me there and I'm also on all the social media platforms so you, we can get interactive there and have further discussions on it. So let's keep the conversation going. Let's ensure that we retire and retire very well and comfortably. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll keep in touch with you. Uh, I'm sure uh, the participants will have more uh, questions to ask or offline, <laughs> you know. And uh, I would like to thank you once again for helping us uh, understand these important issues. Uh, thank you. And bye-bye uh, to everybody. Okay, thank you.